Okay. Ew. Hello, my spoonies. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about eyelashes. I know, that's kind of an odd... It's an odd topic to talk about. But this is one of those little secrets that I figured out after I got sick and it also dovetails with a question that I got from one of my viewers about eyelashes so that's what we're going to talk about today. So speaking of viewers, if you've not already done so, I would really appreciate it if you would take a minute, hit the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell. I am having a contest for my first 100 subscribers. All you have to do is be subscribed to my channel and leave a comment in the comment box down below when we get to 100. I'm going to give away a box of Spoonie Certified Makeup. I think free stuff, right? I know I say this like every time, but I like free stuff, right? Every time ColourPop does a giveaway, I'm all up in that trying to get free stuff. I feel like one of the, and the Creme Shop too, right? If you don't follow the Creme Shop on Instagram, they're always giving stuff away. Never me, but I'm playing the odds, right? Anyway, today we're going to talk about eyelashes. So the question that I got from one of my viewers was, why do we curl our eyelashes, right? Why, why would anyone want to do that? And it's very, very funny because one of the conversations that Chi, who's been on my channel before, and I'll link one of our videos up above, that Chi and I have had privately was how she's absolutely terrified of this thing. Yeah. It sort of implied in that conversation was why in heaven's name would anyone want to use this thing? So it's really not that uncommon of a question. When our eyelashes are curled up in a way, it makes us look very awake. There are some things um, from a biological perspective, right, that makes humans look more attractive. Having wide awake eyes is one of them. Actually, the larger the eyes, the cuter the brain registers us as being. That's why anime characters that are, you know, supposed to be really cutesy have like really big eyes. The other thing is like dilated pupils, and that has to do with the whole when you find someone attractive, your pupils dilate, and so we tend to find dilated pupils or large eyes um, with big pupils very attractive. It's just, it's a biological thing in us. I think it's, we're programmed in our brains. It's like, oh, look, that person thinks I'm cute. And now I think they're cute too. I, I don't really know. It's a biological thing. And I think this is one of those things that even if you aren't sick, as you age, this also becomes an issue because our eyelids, no matter how good the eye cream, no matter how much you know sunscreen, how good care we take of ourselves, eventually our eyelids are going to droop. And unless you go see a plastic surgeon to get that fixed, that's just nature, right? It's gravity. It happens, right? But curling your eyelashes is a great counterbalance to that because what it does is it opens up the eyes, right? It will make your eyes look more awake. It distracts from the sagging if you're older. Overall, it's just a better look. Let's talk about options for curling your lashes. Now, the tried and true is this thing, right? There are some problems with this. Number one, not, not everyone is comfortable putting something like this and then holding it so close to their eye. Number two, there are some motility issues with this particular device. I ran into problems when I got sick because I cannot always, when I'm flaring, I can't always squeeze my hands very well. So using this is a problem. If you're having someone else do your makeup, for example, spouse, partner, sibling, doesn't matter. A lot of times it's very uncomfortable to have them use this on you for a couple of reasons. Number one, instinctively, I don't think we like people coming at us, like coming at our eyes with things. I think that's just natural. And then number two, they can't always see where, like, where your lashes are. They don't always know how much pressure to apply or if they're pushing up, so it can be painful, right? So just from a, like an accessibility standpoint for people that have uh, issues with their hands, this is really not a great choice. The other thing about this that has nothing to do with like motility is that what this basically is is like a crimper, right? So what it's doing is it's going into your eyelashes and it's just kind of 
crimping them, right? It's like forcing them to, right, to curl. So think about your hair. For anyone who's ever tried to curl their hair or even straighten their hair, right? If you just used straight up pressure, right? If you wrapped your hair around your finger real tight and then just held it like that and, and put some hairspray on it, maybe, maybe it would hold for like a minute, right? But it's less likely to. There's a reason why we use heated products on our hair to get it to do whatever, which brings me to what my particular choice when it comes to my eyelashes are and where did you go? There you are. Okay, so this is choice number two. What this is is a heated eyelash curler. I'm gonna bring it in kind of close. I know, it looks, it looks scarier than it is. So I started using a heated eyelash curler a very long time ago. I actually started using them when they were very, they were a brand new thing. And I was reading Elle magazine at my mom's house, and there was a whole article about this like heated eyelash curler, which was a brand new thing at the time. And I said to her, I feel ridiculous, but I kind of want one of these, right? I mean, it just seemed at the time they were very expensive, right? And it, and it seemed like this kind of excessive thing to want, right? Ridiculous. Like you're going to spend money on this little thing just to heat your eyelashes, right? And I sort of laughed at myself and rolled my eyes. But my mother remembered that and she actually bought me one for Christmas. And I absolutely loved it. And here is why. And it looked different than this one. When they first came out, they they were sort of shaped more like this. And I think there's still some on the market that look like this, right? Um, but the pads of them get hot. The heat actually curls the lashes much better, much like you would with any other hair in your head. It holds the curl a lot longer. And you're also not like pulling <clears throat> in this, like especially in this particular instance, you're not putting a lot of pressure, you're not pulling. So kind of fast forward to before, right before I got sick, mine had died. Like, I think, um, I think I'd been through two at that point, right? Is it had been a while. And I didn't replace it because it would just, I don't know why, whatever. I just did not replace it. And then I got sick. And, and it occurred to me that going back to a heated eyelash curler was probably a very smart move. Let me tell you a couple of things that I like about this. Number one, it has two different heat settings. So if you have very stubborn eyelashes that don't like to curl or won't hold the curl, right, if you try it out on setting one, doesn't work for you, try it on setting two. So that's number one. Number two, from a motility standpoint, it is incredibly, it's a lot thicker. It's designed actually to be held very comfortably in a loose hand. You don't have to grip it hard. You can use it and like really rest your arm on the table, right? And actually rest your hand on your face to use it. And you can have someone else use it on you very safely. It's not uncomfortable at all. I've actually tested this out. Um, really, it's not, and it's curved, right? So it's not gonna kind of get into your eye so from a, from like a user standpoint, if you need assistance with curling your eyelashes, this is a really great choice. For me, I feel like because it's, it doesn't pull on the eyelashes the way that this does, I actually feel like it's better on the eyelashes than the other kind. So what I decided to do today, I'm wearing suns, you know, my usual sunscreen foundation and concealer, but I'm not wearing any other makeup at all. I didn't do my eyebrows, nothing no highlighter. I'm going to bring you in really close so you can see my eyes and we're going to do kind of a before and after. Now my eyes do tend to droop naturally on the outer corners. I have just a tiny, you can see I have a tiny bit of pudding here on the like outer corners of my eyes. So naturally I kind of always look just a tiny bit sleepy because of the shape of my eyes. So how the heated curler, eyelash curler works is you turn it on and you can see there's a little LED light and in the center there's this little dot and when it gets hot, it's going to change colors. I will say I've noticed when I use this the way the instructions say, which is to use it with mascara, I'm fine on the lowest setting. If I'm using it on its own, a lot of times I have to bump it up to two. The curl also doesn't last as long without mascara. 
If you don't like the look of traditional mascara, my recommendation would just be buy some clear mascara and use it. All it's, it's like hairspray basically is how it's functioning on the eyelashes, right? It's helping the eyelashes to hold the curl through the day. But when I say the curl doesn't last as long without mascara, I mean that my eyelashes stay curled for three to four hours, right? Before I notice the kind of droopiness coming back versus all day, right? So all you have to do is take it, you can see it's curved. You just take it under the eyelashes and you push it up and, and you do it kind of slow. So you think about if you've ever flat ironed your hair, it's kind of the same idea, right? It's a slow and steady. And I'm actually gonna rest my elbow on the table for stability's sake, because like I have said, sometimes motility is a problem for me and I don't, I don't wanna poke myself. <laughs> Now this is in the lowest setting, like I said, if I'm doing this without mascara, most of the time I do it on the highest setting, but since I knew I was gonna put mascara on. All right, so now let's try it with mascara. Today I am using the Essence I Love Extreme Mascara. I will cut a picture of this in probably. All right, now I'm just gonna take the tool and it's gonna be the exact same thing, just with mascara on. So one thing that I have noticed with this wand is if you have any kind of like really bad clumps, heating that clump is actually gonna like make it even worse. So because my eyes are slightly hooded, I tend to give a little extra focus onto the outer corners. Like I'll do the whole of my eye. And then when I'm all done, I go back and kind of just hit the outer corners a second time to heat them because I really want that extra lift in the outer corners to keep my eyes from looking too droopy. One second, I'm gonna pull you guys back out. Okay, so very quick, very easy way. Now my eyes, I think they look a lot more awake. <laughs> I look a little more kind of fresh-eyed, right? This is a wonderful thing to do. It really does not take that long, under two minutes. This is a great thing you can throw into your routine if you're having a bad spoony day. It does not require a lot of spoons, especially if you're using a heated curler. So that's regular eyelashes. Now, real quick, I'm gonna talk about false eyelashes because false eyelashes are also an option. If you have very thin eyelashes or you don't want to muck about with all of this or you want a different look false eyelashes are definitely a way to go and most of the time when you see false eyelashes it's with like a, a very fancy like online it's with a very fancy makeup look but I am actually a fan of wearing them by themselves and there is a wide array of false lashes from very very natural to very like almost but i think of as like the showgirl lashes right they're like very big they will do the the exact same thing for the eye as long as they are trimmed properly to shape the eye and you know aren't too long so they're pulling down the eye the same problem that i naturally have right if the false eyelashes are too long they'll pull down false eyelashes will accomplish something very similar to putting mascara on and curling your lashes like i just did it'll be more dramatic though what I thought I would do is next, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put on some false eyelashes and I'm actually going to go to Ulta and have it done professionally. This is a great way, if you're uncomfortable with false eyelashes, for the very first time to go, they will walk you through trimming them down, right, and putting them on. Hey guys, all right, so here we are for part two. I am at Ulta, I'm getting ready to go in to have my lashes done. I am not wearing any makeup beyond foundation and concealer and I put like threw on some lip balm just so that you could see right the before and then the after how the lashes make such a big difference right so we're gonna go in we're gonna see what we can do do you want to talk about the process at all bianca or okay so 
Why do you put on mascara first before you powder your lashes? Uh, just so I can hold them on a little bit better. Eyes the professional. Even though I know the answer, I figure <laughs> this is what she does. Probably good to get my finger out of the shot. Okay, so this is the real benefit to having this done here when you're uncomfortable is that they will measure and trim them for you. Oh, nice. A lot of times that's where people really struggle when they start wearing false lashes is knowing how much to, to cut off. And having them do it for you kind of guarantees that it's a better length. And then that can help you like when you do it on your own at home. Nice. The very first time I ever wore false lashes, this is what I did. I came here and a very nice woman measured them for me. And then I used those as a guide going forward to kind of help me. Okay, so obviously they let us film, which was really nice. And here is the look, right? Very different. I need to, like, clearly, we didn't line my eyes at all. Um, she asked me if I wanted to, and I said no. Most of the time when I wear false eyelashes, I do, like, line my eyes to disguise the lash band a little bit. I might do that when I get home and then turn the camera back on so you guys can see that. All right. Okay, so I'm back home, clearly, out of the car, and I went ahead and put on just a tiny, tiny bit of black eyeliner. I did not want to do that before the lash application, only because I really wanted to give you guys, like, the full, right, naked eye appearance, and then the full lash experience, and then this is basically, like, kind of the last step, so I just take a tiny bit doesn't even have to be anything fancy. Like I use my NYX black, I mean, this is like, right, just their run of the mill, right, eyeliner. And took it just a tiny bit in where the lash band ends to make it look more natural. So this disguises the lash band so that you're not seeing kind of this like cut off of the color. Then you'll notice how full now my eyes look, how awake. Right? Pretty phenomenal. And I am wearing, the ones that I went with, I don't think I said in the video, is, um, there we go. Okay, so this is their um, a Prima Donna Lash, which is the second fullest lash. They have another one, but it's kind of red toned, and I wasn't certain the woman at the bar, like she was really sweet and we kind of went, I went back and forth and we kind of talked about it and she said she felt like since I was going for a more natural look, even though this is like incredibly full, that the black would be better, but that she kind of encouraged me to come back and try the red ones for a time when I'm going to be doing like more of a makeup look where I can make that kind of reddish tone work. Um, so I think if you guys are interested in seeing that, I'm gonna put a poll up above. You can vote yes, no, if you wanna see me try to do a look and make the more reddish eyelashes work. Uh, I can do that too. The really cool thing about, about this packaging that Benefit does um, is they have this little pull out tab. I don't know if you can see it. And you literally can like hold it up to your right to your eyes in the mirror to, to get an idea of what the lash is going to look like on you, which is super cool. And the way it works at Ulta is that if you buy the lashes in store while you're, like, while you're there, the lashes are $15, the application is free. If you bring lashes in and you want them applied, it's $10. So for $5 more, you get high quality lash and it's trimmed properly to your eye. 
the great thing about this is if you're new to lashes, I would really encourage you to go do this. Number one, you're going to get a good lash. Number two, you're going to talk to somebody who will be able to help steer you in the kind of fullness direction that you really need to go. And just be honest with them about what your daily looks look like. And then number three, you're going to get a lash that is trimmed precisely to your eyes. So even when you're done, like when the lashes have kind of lost their life, which for me, I get anywhere between 15 to 20 wears out of a pair of lashes as long as I take care of them. You will still have a perfectly trimmed pair of lashes that you can use as a guidepost to cut all of your lashes with. So this takes out the guesswork for you. So really, it's a great investment in my opinion, and a wonderful service. I have never had a bad experience at the Benefit Brow Bar, honestly. Like it's hands down, it's just phenomenal. All right, so that's it. That's that's all about lashes today. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comment box down below. I hope you guys are happy, healthy, and well rested, and are remembering that self-care is the most important form of care. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.